you asked me in the, earlier, what is liturgy? Two or more. Two or more. That, All right. that passage, mm. in our interpretation of it, is Jesus saying, this is what the church looks like. This is the Prayer Culture Podcast. Now, I will say recently, recently the Lord actually <laughs> showed me through a new believer mm. how valuable liturgy can be in prayer because wow. I didn't understand how ingrained, because I grew up in church, language for prayer and all that mm. stuff just was. Yes. And I think I'm spontaneous, right. but I have all this built in language. So a friend recently, the Lord actually did a supernatural work wow. for him to get saved. Um, actually through spontaneous prayer, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge. He, he, about his life yeah. and he also had a dream being yeah. filled by the Holy spirit. But after he got saved, he's coming out of Islam. He's like, what do I pray? Wow. And I'm like, well, you just, I'm like, no, like he needs some foundation and context to start with, you know, which is of course the Lord's prayer. But then beyond that, um, I have a book that I gave to him called Every Moment Holy that has a lot of pr really good. pre written prayers. Yes. And familiar. he's been really enjoying it mm. and it's really helped him engage with the Lord. Something I just didn't have a context for because it wasn't part of my tradition. Yeah. So, like, I, I really see how that can help a lot, especially a lot of people who come up from some other tradition or get saved and they just don't know what language to use. Mm. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, I can't pray as good as person X. And so they don't want to pray out loud. Mm -hmm. Um, so I could see where like, there is some real value there, you know, with connecting with the Lord, even though I very much believe in spontaneous prayer in the gathering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, here, let me put this out there and see what you can do with it. But, um, I have a theory on why a lot of Muslims are seeing, having visions of Christ at a higher rate than any other population. Well, I mean, would you agree that's happening? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You agree with that? Okay. Yeah. So my theory is this, I don't think it's a, I don't necessarily believe that it's some some sort of like special unique work of grace that God is doing in the world per se. I mean, it, it always is. All of it is, no matter who it is, no matter their background. I think what's happened is they pray those prayer those salat prayers five times a day, and what's part of those prayers? You know, it's like God reveal yourself to me. Mm -hmm. God, if you're there, who who my, the God of my understanding reveal yourself to reveal me. yourself to me. Mm. Yeah, and I think when the heart locks in. However imperfect, I mean, it's all imperfect, right? My heart locking in right now at the, at the purest state it's ever been, you know, good Reformed theology, is still corrupt and in need of, like, continual reminders of grace and what God's doing in my heart and what, in, in His Son through me, through us. I think a lot of, I think millions of these people are saying, like, they're turning their hearts and suddenly it becomes a prayer that God receives and mm. is answering. Okay, so, like, because they're praying to monotheistic, God, they're not praying to an idol, they're not praying to the earth, they're not praying to just whatever that, that the Bible clearly delineates. Um, they're asking the invisible God, show me who you are. Yes. And uh, God will meet them in that prayer. And maybe not every time, but like often God yeah. does something supernatural yeah. in them to show them. Well, you look at the uh, Paul of the Erechabus, right? That's what I say. In Acts 15, 14, 15, mm -hmm. when he goes out and he finds the unknown God, mm -hmm. he's like, I love it. it talks about Paul being stirred up. Like yeah. he's just like, ah, Vexed by all the <laughs> yeah, he's like, right. oh my gosh. And he's like, gosh, you know, he didn't say anything. Uh, he just, he prayed. <laughs> oh, my uh, pre gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he's like, oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, there's man. all these different. Anyway. And he says, he applies what he applies the hunger of the heart <laughs> to, uh, in prayer to the unknown God to a genuine desire to know Jesus Christ, to know mm. the tr one true living God. Mm. Mm. It's a strange moment. It yeah. is, yeah. It's a strange teaching. So I, I want to be careful that I'm not saying, hey. You're not saying Allah, Allah no. Muhammad's God is God. No. You're not no. saying that, right? Not at all. I'm simply saying that the heart, it can be quite a mystery mm. that God is unafraid to engage in. Yeah. Right? Well, and that's what happened with my Muslim mm. friend. He, he asked the Lord, in my dream tonight, mm. if I'm supposed to be a Muslim, make wow. me a Muslim. If I'm supposed to be a Christian, I need to be a Christian in my dream. And yeah. he went to sleep, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit in his dream. Oh and he said goodness. it was like real. Hmm. And I, so, You know what wow. I think is happening? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That is mind-blowing. I, I think what happened to him and what's happening to Muslims all around the world is, how did we get here? I, I think it's... Let's go. You did this. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was me, actually. <laughs> I, I think it's 
You're right. It's not like, oh, you know, Yahweh is God and Allah is God. It's like, no, there is one true God. Yahweh is God. Yep. And there, there is a false God, um, you know, demonic being naming himself Allah who's being worshipped, and that should be fled from. But when there is this genuine, I think the work of the Holy Spirit to create doubt, is Islam true or is there another? Is there a, a truth that's better than this? You know, this isn't actually true. There is a truth and I need it. And then the craving of their heart genuinely yes. is, okay, whoever you are, one true God, yes, reveal yourself to me. And the Lord mm. says, yes. Because the Lord doesn't say no to that prayer, to anybody. So mm. I think that's what's going on, is that the Holy Spirit is working on that heart to make it genuine, to make it not idolatrous. Mm. Yeah. And so they're fleeing from something that the Holy Spirit's led them to abandon and now pursue the truth that they hadn't known, which is like, you know, the idol to the unknown God. And he's going, I'm, I've come here to proclaim to you yeah. who he is. You know, yes. you've been worshiping this pantheon of all these yep. gods, but you've left some reserved worship for one you think is out there that you don't know, and I'm here to tell you who he is. Yeah, the door is not completely shut yeah. on your heart. Like, and that was good enough for the Lord in that place. That's wild. Come on. Let me ask you guys a question. Yeah. So We asked the question. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Camera three, two, one. Um, no. Go ahead. Uh, I'm I'm really curious to know because I I'm just really getting to know you guys right in this conversation and Michael and I have had a little bit of interaction over the last year, like what makes you you guys both grew up in the church yeah yes grew up in the church okay so you grew up around prayer, but clearly something shifted at some point where you're doing things like this. Mm -hmm. So like yeah. what was the thing? Was there a moment, or was it like the slow drip? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but was there, I, I feel like there's probably just actually a moment. And I, I you know, and a I wanted moments. a few moments. Yeah. For me, I would say a season. A season of prayer? Uh, of becoming acutely aware uh. of how desperate my need is for communion with the Lord. Mm. And, and that's what's led me to a deeper prayer life. Wow. Was there something that initiated that season? Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. What were we doing there? <laughs> Dying. <laughs> no, we, no, we were there to help indigenous church planters. Wow. And, uh, and during that season, I, I began to feel very, very far from God. Yeah. And, uh, and what I, you know, the Lord was disciplining me. Uh, I'm sure that we helped some people while we were there, but the Lord was really revealing in me in particular uh, just a deeper awareness of my need. Yeah. So, I, it felt to me like he allowed a thorn in my flesh yeah. for a season to make me more aware right. so that I could pursue him more earnestly yeah. and have more of him. And so that's been my experience since then. More desperate equals more more zeal yes. in pursuit. Yes. And then, so Psalm 63 for me has become, instead of being kind of theoretical, it's become real. It's my life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so thirsty for the Lord. I, my soul clings to you. Wow. That's that to me, that's what it, it felt like. I was just like, ah, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> you know? And that's led to wanting just more intimacy with him. In so, so what I hear you saying is the in deeper devotion to Jesus in prayer, all of a sudden, you said it this way. I love this. It became the scripture actually became your story. Yeah. It became your roadmap, which mm -hmm. is well, it's an interesting way of putting that. Mm. Most people don't think about scripture that way. I don't mm. think. I don't think they yeah. do. Yeah, they don't see it as they telling their story, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. like God is saying something to them. We had a guy recently who uh, came to faith uh, on my front porch, and uh, mm. <laughs> just not at all familiar with, with anything in the church. Just so unbelievably lost. Uh, and I, I was like reading him Romans one. <laughs> you know? Not normally Lesson something I would start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would not normally start there, but he is a veteran, mm. and he said to me, "How can I become a Christian?" Wow. And I and I so I started explaining. He goes, stop. He goes, "I didn't actually want you to tell me." He goes, "I." <laughs> he's like, "Let me tell you why I can't." And he wow. says, "Yeah." He says, um, "I cannot stand before God one day 
and account for all 12,000 rounds of bullets that I fired at enemy combatants overseas. Wow. Mm. How can I possibly account for every round that I fired and every life that I took intentionally or unintentionally before God? Wow. And I looked at him and I said, brother, you don't have to account mm. for every stray bullet that fired or bullet intentionally or unintentionally. If you want to understand this faith, you got to account for one thing and one thing only, and that is for the sacrifice that Christ made on your behalf. Yeah. That's what you account for when you stand before God on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. That is it. Yeah. And he goes, uh-oh, I get it. <laughs> he said that. Oh, wow. Come he said on. that. It just and landed on It me. landed, and then I started reading Romans 1 to him, and I don't normally do that. Like I said, I don't, because it's kind of heavy. Yeah. You know, it's like, let's yeah. start with the Gospel of Mark. You know, I don't know, <laughs> Gospel of John. And instead, it was like, hey, he's been through some heavy stuff. The Bible's a heavy book. Yeah. Like, listen to this. It's good. So I'm reading Romans 1 to him, and he goes, and it, it's like a prayer, actually. You know, I'm reading it to him, but it's from my heart, and I'm getting like, I'm connecting with it. And his heart is turning in that direction, and I think this is the way that we've been discussing. The Spirit works. It becomes a prayer for him, and he stops me midway through Romans 1, of all chapters. Mm -hmm. We just got past the part about the gospel being for all people, and we've gotten to the part about, you know, what sinners do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. like everyone. And he goes, stop. He goes, that's my story. Wow. He goes, everything you just read. Come on. He goes, that's your, this guy, Paul, he, is, what is it, his name is Paul? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. He goes, that guy's telling my story. Wow. He said, that guy understands what it's like to be a human being in this world today. And that is yeah. beautiful. And so he just kept, I was like, well, let me get to the really good part yeah. about peace with God through faith. Right. I mean, it was just like, that's the whole the story. wielding the word. Yes. That's good stuff. Come on. I love that. Wow. But so what about good. you? You have an, a moment. There had to be a moment. Yeah. Well, I was raised up in a tradition that was what I would call Bible centric. Yeah. Um, and we prayed, you know, five minutes here and there corporately. Uh, so I knew I was missing something. Hmm. And I moved to Uganda and did missions there. Because you're both like <laughs> missions. missionaries. This is amazing. Okay. And uh, what I encountered there was, you know, churches that at least once a month do an overnight, all night prayer meeting. Um, I also wow. um, did an internship at the House of Prayer, some different stuff like that. Um, but... I was actually in prayer and I believe the Lord's like, Hey, you're going to be part of a, a movement of Bible centric churches, um, to abiding prayer. Hmm. And so, uh, so basically a few years ago, the Lord brought that back to me, yeah. that word, uh, with Matthew 18, 20 or two or three are gathered my name there. I'm among them. And we started two or more. Uh, and so what we do, you know, just my heart for that is I know that the Lord wants to meet with people, uh, in the quiet place, like Psalm 37, wait patiently for me. Um, and a lot of people don't know how to do that in an entertainment yeah. driven society in right. a society where, you know, mostly all I know is intercession where I'm just throwing stuff up against the wall. Um, but I don't know why I'm interceding for this or I, I don't believe in it necessarily because I haven't even stopped to think about it. Um, and so two or more prayer meetings have uh, abiding time built in, mm. uh, to help people wait on the Lord, meditate on scripture, prepare their hearts to intercede, um, ask the Spirit to teach them the things to intercede for. Uh, and then we go in an intercession informed by Christ mm -hmm. and ready to intercede with faith and expectancy, mm -hmm. which does not negate the so sovereignty of God. Yeah, in the Bible, it. people pray with expectancy Absolutely. and faith. Yeah. Um, then we also emphasize fasting as part of that yeah. and the importance of fasting, what fasting's for, uh, that ultimately our prayer should include the return of Christ as a very important part of our life. Mm -hmm. No matter what your eschatology is, you do believe Jesus is coming back in some shape or form. <laughs> and so it's just like, hey, we want Jesus to return. What are the things we need to intercede for and ask the Lord to do powerfully for that to come more quickly? Um, so yeah, that's that's basically my story, why we started two or more and mm. um, what God I think is doing powerfully. We had a guest on recently who was just like, listen, I'm so excited to be in this time right now yeah, because mm -hmm. it seems like the Lord is purifying his bride. He's exposing um, the, the people. He's exposing sexual sin. He's exposing he's exposing all kinds of things in leaders. He's exposing totally. our idolatry for yeah. celebrityism. Yeah. Uh, and he's purifying us and unifying us uh, for his return. And so I'm excited, and I yeah. want to be part of that in prayer. Yeah. So Yeah, that's really good, man. 
As a reminder, the Prayer Culture Podcast is a ministry of two or more, which is a crowdfunded ministry. So if you enjoy this content, please check out our website and giving page listed in the description. Also, when you have a second, hit the like and subscribe button. Yeah, one of the, uh, I think you asked me in the, earlier, what is liturgy? Two or more. Two or more. That, All right. that passage mm. um, is Jesus, in our interpretation of it, is Jesus saying, this is what the church looks like. When two or more are gathered, he says, I am in their midst. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is with us. He's in our midst. One, we're, we're by ourselves, for sure. That's why you abide, right? Like, yeah. you know, he's with us. But he places a special prominence on the gathering of the believers who abide together, like you're saying. And I think that's why that you're, what you're doing is so, is so powerful. I think, actually, that's why we can connect on it mm -hmm. and be like, we're, we're in this together. Because we're not just talking about, okay, what is prayer? What is it? It's, we're talking about how do the people of God come together and pray together and be the church? I think it's what it sounds like, at least to me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, John, thanks for having us on your podcast today. <laughs> 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 I'm just so grateful for this opportunity. Well, I, I, just, I was just like, man, I, I want to hear this story. Uh, and anyway, I just I know I've talked a lot too. So. The Anglican Bishops oh, right. Podcast, smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I, the reason I asked is because we were talking about we were talking about prayer, and you know, far be it for me not to inquire because I think there are, there are little breadcrumbs in all of our stories sure. yeah. that that highlight you know why we believe what we believe, how we approach the, the subject of prayer, and I think it's important. You know, we you know my I didn't come become an Anglican because I was captive, captivated by the liturgy, to be honest. I became an Anglican because my son was born nearly two and a half months premature mm. after my wife and I were forced to leave a church, brokenhearted, mm. destroyed, no income, nothing on the horizon, mm. and not sure if we believed in God. And it was some strange, innate hunger, you know, for Holy Communion mm. that, and I can't, to this day, I can't tell you, other than the providence of God, other than his strong hand in our lives, why I even thought of that. Wow. Wow. And it's going to God with these people who I thought were a little stuffy and 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 I didn't think the service was that exciting. I, I'll be honest. I was <laughs> right. just like, I'm from like, you know, I'm from like cool church, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, verb church is what I'm from. Um, you that's said my freedom, word. right? Literally, yeah. the title is Literally freedom. Is freedom. <laughs> what we do. Freedom. And now look at you. I know. And it's like, that's. To, to just go, I mean, we're all, it sounds like our stories are so similar yeah. and so different at the same time. The reason yeah. they could be so similar, so different is because I think that you're right. Like the church is coming to a place where we're saying, man, there's some real trauma here. There's some real pain. There's some real problems. Sure. Some real problems. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to be free. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you look at like God's people coming out of Egypt. It says in Exodus 20, God says to the people, I've brought you out of the house of slavery. That's what I've done. Now, here are the Ten Commandments. Yeah. So it's the study of the house of freedom. This is what it means to be the people of God who live in covenant with him. We're learning still how to be free. Mm. And I hope that spontaneous prayer has a role to play. And I hope that, you know, just like I hope liturgy sure. has a role to play. Mm -hmm. I think it does have a role to play. You know. Well, and what's really interesting is there's an exodus right now of, of believers that are moving away from maybe traditional Southern evangelicalism, yeah. either towards more liturgy or more free spirit or whatever. Yeah. Um, but as I've seen that, I've seen people who are, are kind of going this way a little bit, like uniting with yeah. people who are going a little more mm -hmm. liturgy. Like people are coming together yes. around it and not going Correct. like, hey, we're going to fight over this thing. No. They're actually going like, oh, okay, like we don't do it that way, but that's okay. Like we're <laughs> all going for Jesus here. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. The thing about being Anglican is we say, look, uh, here's what it means to be Anglican. I'm reformed, not mad if you're not. <laughs> I'm an Anglican, not mad if you're not. No. <laughs> So there's a church in our area. Just gotta tell this quick story. Is that okay? Yeah, go for I'm it. I'm sorry. I don't. No, go for I, it. I just get so excited about this stuff. Um, there's a church in our area, non-denom, charismatic, uh, deeply connected to like the Bethel stuff, mm -hmm. and sort of the prayer movement. All this, you know, definitely the op feels like the opposite of where our church is at. You right. know, in many ways. But we're good. I'm good friends with the senior pastor, and uh, their elders in their church uh, hit a crisis point where they felt like they weren't really guiding the millennials in their congregation well. And mm -hmm. then they, they said, why don't we study together as elders uh, what it means to take the Lord's Supper together? And we'll go through a deep season of study, reflection, and prayer. Mm -hmm. 
they emerged out of that season pretty much uh, in complete agreement that the Eucharist was more than just a symbol, mm -hmm. that it was somehow a mystery. It was somehow a participation in grace mm -hmm. in a very real sense in the here and now. Mm -hmm. And they realized that if they really believed that and they had looked in what the church had taught throughout the ages, they were going to do it every Sunday. Because mm. in our world, just like at Calvin's world, Luther's world, what you receive in the Eucharist is promised to you in the gospel. Mm. Everything yeah. you receive in the Eucharist is also promised to you in the gospel, right? Um, and so they started having it every Sunday. Every Sunday. Come on. Now, the way they do it, deeply disagreeable to my tradition. Okay? <laughs> right. Very different. Very fluid. Not even real wine, just grape juice. No offense, like and subscribe. Uh, but it's fine. That's what they're doing. That's where they're at. And yeah. they unite what they're doing with faith, right, from their hearts. Yeah. So they began to do it every week. They did it for a few months. Then they polled all of their millennials in their congregation. Like, these are people in their 20s, 30s, and even some early 40s. And they said, what keeps you coming back to church every week? Why do you still continue to come? Mm -hmm. And the overwhelming majority of them said, we take communion together. Mm. That's what keeps coming, Interesting. Come, we come, coming back to. Mm. So they started really putting more liturgical, more traditionally liturgical elements into their liturgy mm. because they saw it as like that anchor point. Mm -hmm. So now they have, the, they put in the Apostles' Creed, they put in the, again, Holy Communion. Um, and they've adopted all these different practices and prayers in their own way. Now, as, a, as an Anglican, I could say, well, yeah, that's sort of a, um, I'll, just, I'll speak honestly here, some would argue it's a bastardization of the actual form okay. of what we're doing. Maybe there's an argument for that, okay? But I would say, you know what, we should lean into the side of the gener generosity and say that, you know what, they're doing something, and they're connecting in a unique way, in a way that it feels like the whole church is being brought to. And frankly, I, don't, I rarely meet a pastor these days in any tradition who says that the Holy Communion is just purely symbolic. Mm -hmm. I rarely. God is doing a work, and I don't think it's, again, I don't think it's Anglican. I just think it's, like you're saying, Michael, it's for all of us. There's something sure. happening. Yeah. Well, and Scripture says take communion every time you gather together, so <laughs> he does yeah. actually say that. <laughs> That's pretty That's pretty good. Plain That's language. good. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true, though. You're, you're, thank you. You're making the it's, point. It actually is there, yeah. It totally sure. is That's there. That's why we Absolutely. do it every week. We, I mean, we do it every week. The last church I was yeah. at did it every week. I think it's cheapness. I don't know. I think it's cheapness. Just, you know, mm. I don't want to pay for it every week or something is the reason people don't do it every week. Oh, I thought you were about to say that it's cheap. It's cheaper. It's uh, it makes it too cheap. Oh no, no. Week. I mean, no, like no. people who do it once a month, I think they just don't want to spend the money on it, or they don't have the time. I don't know. Have you heard I, that why, argument? Why don't you before? do it? Have you heard people say, "Oh, we should, we do it once a quarter"? Really? It's, people say that. Do you know why? Um, I think they misunderstand it. <laughs> why? I don't get it. Well, they don't feel the same way about preaching. They don't. Bro, oh, you mean the thing of like it makes it say it makes it do it every week. You do it every week. That's weird. I they don't feel the same way about preaching. Before. They don't. Right. Isn't that interesting? They don't feel the same way about preaching. They feel that way about holy. So it's yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Again, take, take it every time you gather together. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Calvin in, his, in the institute says uh, at least every time you get together, at no, least we, once. We like day. grape juice. Um, John, I'm just we gonna, do. I'm going to confess. We bastardize it. We we like grape juice. Let's pray right now. Father. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Get out. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. You just bring the cup with the alcohol and just go around every table. You know, you should have brought the whole thing. You know, we're here. <laughs> we actually thought about, uh, uh, no, not seriously thought about, Bishop, if you're watching, don't, we didn't seriously think about this. Uh, we seriously thought about uh, maybe decorating the table as like a holy communion table, but ah. <laughs> didn't do that. We're no, sure how that no. would fly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love what you guys are doing. This is amazing. I just, I've, I've had so much fun being with you. And so I, I hope that like my joking and lightheartedness is, it comes across as affection for what you're doing. Cause yes. I just have so much fun with, I'm having so much fun with you guys. Yeah, anyway. we, we try to have a lot of fun poking fun at ourselves yeah. and our own traditions. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's if we're able to laugh at ourselves and at each other and how we're different, it feels like family, yeah. you know, like yeah. you, you're not comfortable enough with strangers to laugh 
at each other's traditions yeah. and ways of thinking. But when you really know your family, you can laugh and be more lighthearted. And yeah. so that, sure. that's how we and John, are. we don't. Yeah. Yeah. We don't do the form the same, but like hmm. your family with us, we're, we're yeah. all doing this. Feel that. And that's why we want you to come on and talk about your tradition hmm. so that others who are like, just don't get it or haven't yeah. really been exposed to liturgy or whatever hmm. would, will understand it better and go, oh, okay. Uh, this Anglican, um, is it Reverend? Is that right? Fa- whatever. Father. Whatever. Reverend. Um, <sighs> he's... He's a, a person. <laughs> yeah. And he loves Jesus right. and he reads the Bible. So, you know, what's the big division about? Let's just, hey, he's a he's a guy, you know, and he's talking about and he's got biblical reasons for doing what he does. And he's, you know, mm. not insane, even though he wears a collar in public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just easy to see in a crowd. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And just collect lint. We're actually in lint. <laughs> terrible joke that's I'm a sorry. terrible joke i don't know what to do now i don't know who i am <laughs> do, we, do we just turn it uh, off now or <laughs> no just uh john just uh what's yeah. the name of your church again so everybody knows and... so it's uh all saints conroe okay. or all saints church uh yeah. we're an anglican church in conroe on the east side uh we are proclaiming the gospel um to conroe it's by standing on the word remaining in the ancient faith and planting churches that's yeah. what we're doing Praise check God. it out all saints church conroe Check us out. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Stop <laughs> looking around. I'm sorry. <laughs> John, you need to make sure that when we look at a camera, that's how you edit this, okay? Yes. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Every time he looks at one. He'll be like, man, there's lots of cuts going on in this podcast. <laughs> it's going to take hours. How many terrible things did the Anglican say? <laughs> just just the one handful. If you think of you yourself, this is a oh, lot, just think man. I'm holding back. Uh, right. uh, he said, he said Baptists are going Sunday to hell. Morning, that's what he'll like. Said. I want this on a Sunday morning. It's bad. With you. Okay, all right. Let's go. <laughs> we'll do it. Hey, John, don't edit this. Uh, you know that, that part, John, where you're talking about how Baptists go to hell? Did you? you wow. Remember that part? You remember that wow. part? <laughs> no, I don't, actually. <laughs> I do not. That'd be bad news for my father in law. <laughs> hey, that'd be bad news for my father in law, who's a senior pastor at First Baptist El Paso. So. <laughs> John, wow. John's a Baptist, actually. He's a worship leader at a Baptist are church. You really? so we are praying yeah. for you. <laughs> Not for their salvation, right? You mean for the... <laughs> no, that's what I meant. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, wow. You heard him. You heard him. <laughs> listen, I don't... Listen, I think all all Baptists can become Anglican in the new heavens and new earth. Oh, gosh. Man. I'm teasing. So many missiles. We're be alive. <laughs> Just fuck. We will be like him. What can I say? <laughs> Jesus speaks uh, in Elizabethan uh, English. <laughs> you- all, all you MacArthurites out there, don't have a heart attack, please. Calm down. It's okay. Hey, I'll, I can lie. I can okay. appreciate some Johnny Mac from time to time. <laughs> there we go. Oh, we can, there we, we go. All, hey, we all been there. We all been there. Uh, all right. Well, thanks, John, for coming on. That was, was fun. You guys are amazing. And, and just, uh, I'm going to keep up with what you're doing and, uh, Pray for me and pray for us. And, yeah, uh, of course. Pray for you. Absolutely. All right. As a reminder, the Prayer Culture Podcast is a ministry of two or more, which is a crowdfunded ministry. So if you enjoy this content, please check out our website and giving page listed in the description. Also, when you have a second, hit the like and subscribe button.